unlock a deeper connection with our community through our Patreon, gain exclusive access to behind-the-scenes content, bikini hauls, and Patreon-exclusive massage videos. Join our Patreon or download our app to embark on a path of tranquility and self-discovery. Your journey awaits. Namaste. Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to be doing a deep tissue neck massage for the lovely Michelle. If you don't have time to watch this video right now, go ahead and save to your watch later and just watch whenever you get a chance. Let's go ahead and get started. So whenever I am approaching a deep tissue neck massage, I like to start nice and slow. And I always like to begin my work just by placing hands and just helping my client to settle a little bit. Usually if somebody's requesting um, deep tissue, they like to know that you're really focused. And so, you know, I wouldn't really start the massage with like a scalp massage or just something that's gonna seem kind of frivolous to my client. I want them to know that, um, you know, I'm taking them seriously in their request. So, but you definitely need to work up to deep tissue. Really take your time. So this is a pretty common way that I'll begin my neck massages when I'm doing deep tissue, just running my fingers along the occipital ridge and I'm doing little circles, just warming up all this soft tissue. And this should immediately just help Michelle kind of relax her head and be a little more aware of what's going on in her neck. And keep in mind the muscles in the neck are, um, you know, somewhat delicate so when you're doing deep tissue you just need to be a little bit more careful and maybe take a little bit more time. I've definitely had a handful of massages where I felt worse after getting deep tissue and um, you know the area that was worked on is like more inflamed and so there's definitely a like right and wrong approach to working the deeper layers of tissue. And just feeling for any trigger points. taking note of how things feel from right to left, usually one side that's tighter with the neck. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of start to focus my work in a little bit more. And I'm gonna start just introducing a little bit more pressure. Um, I'd say like, you know, you can sense when the different layers of tissue start to open up and release, and that's kind of like your invitation to go deeper. But if you ever feel like you're forcing your way, you know, through, that's kind of the sign that you're most likely going to damage the muscle tissue that you're working on. And it's not the end of the world, but you're certainly not going to like help your client make progress or feel better in the long run. Whereas, you know, deep tissue that's done, um, like intentionally and effectively, it can help like tremendously with even chronic issues.
I'm making sure that Michelle's head is nice and stable. I'm holding her head with my left hand. And especially as you start to introduce more pressure, you really need that stability. And I'm also resting my arm on the table. This would be a lot harder if I had a floating arm. So. And after I kind of work on these suboccipitals, I'm gonna go ahead and work my way around and onto this mastoid process and just kind of encouraging these attachments in here, especially to the SEM, just encouraging all of this to relax. And this is not an area that you want to, you know, be too aggressive with. You can be firm, but you just don't want to work this area too hard. And I'm always, um, like, intentional about using a somewhat rod surface area. I'm not using the tips of my fingers. I'm really using like all three of my finger pads just to moderate the pressure a little bit more. If um, somebody, you know, were to have like really bad headaches, like this is a great position to work all the way around into the temple, but we'll save that for another video. And it can honestly feel really nice for the occipitalis to um, just do a little bit of just a nice broad it's not really scalp massage, I'm just working that soft tissue, encouraging that superficial muscle to just relax a little bit. Really good to do this after that suboccipital work. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that same warm up on the left side. And you do need to be just aware sometimes when you're in the zone and you're, um, you've done deep tissue on one side, you want to kind of stay in the same gear on the opposite side and you just need to remember to start over with the same sort of sequence. I'm just gradually starting to introduce more pressure. And before I forget, I'd like to thank a few of our patrons. I'd like to thank Benjamin Cobbins, Manek Similana, and Timothy Fields. Thank you guys very much for your support. And anytime that you feel an area, um, is really inflamed. You don't want to do deep tissue, generally speaking. And it's also important to kind of ask, well, what could be causing that? Because it's usually um, the root of it is something else, usually. Um, for suboccipitals, it's probably upper traps. So you would definitely kind of want to take note of that. So I'm going to go ahead and work on these SEM muscles. I'm constantly kind of um,
making adjustments in my initial plan just because like inevitably you're going to go over in time if you stick to plan. So I'm going to focus on the sternocleidomastoid and kind of leave the scalenes for another day. Really good if you can hit the upper traps a little bit. And this whole time, just making sure that I'm resting my arm so that I'm not overextending myself. I think it feels like um, some therapists, when they're first starting out, they feel like they need to just exhaust themselves to like do their very best, and that's not true at all really need to find ways to make it all a little bit easier. All right, I am going to go in with my thumb Just letting this muscle tissue kind of guide me as far as how deep I should be working today. Starting off um, with the lighter, lighter touch. Part of this is um, just getting a sense of like how ropey that muscle feels right now. If the muscle is super bound up, it's really easy to kind of slide off of that muscle fiber. You want to feel nice and confident as you go in with more pressure. That's part of the reason that I really like um, trigger point here is it's just a chance to kind of pause. You're less likely to slide off. I am picking up on a fair amount of tension in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with this trigger point. This first um, time around, I'm not gonna do max pressure, but I'm gonna start introducing just a little bit more. I'm just walking my thumb down. And Michelle should be feeling a pretty nice release just every time that I release my thumb. It should feel pretty good. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm just going to walk my thumb. And this time I am going to go ahead and go a little bit deeper. And sometimes too, if you're sliding off of that muscle fiber, it's just a sign that the muscle tissue is not ready for the amount of pressure that you're trying to offer. And just for time's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the other side. I would usually spend a good bit more time on that muscle. And there's usually a sweet spot so you just kind of have to find what works for you, but you know, you can turn the head back or a little bit more just to create more or less tension in that SEM, depending on, you know, what kind of technique you're trying to use. And sometimes when that SEM feels like kind of ropey, you want less tension, so you might want to turn the head back a little bit. But it can be tricky because it's not always easy to find if you don't turn the head enough. We generally don't want to hold trigger points for longer than like 10 seconds. I'll usually hold for like three to five at a time. 
unless I'm working on like glute muscles, then I might hold a little bit longer. It's really important to remember with the SEM, like, it's just about like leaving it in a place that feels good. You're never like totally done working on that muscle, but you'll just kind of know when it's time to move on. And I like to just give the neck a little stretch. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cup the occipital ridge and just a little pull. Make sure that you're not pulling the hair in a way that feels bad. And that is all for today. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed today's video, you should check out our Patreon page where you'll find some really great content as well. I look forward to seeing you there. Join us for 14 and 30 day programs, hour long classes, and much more on our yoga app, Yoga Plus by Psyche Truth. It's free to download and features a variety of wellness content, including yoga, fitness, Pilates, guided meditations, and interviews with dozens of wellness experts.